This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this video is a quick little quiz about the Smith chart. Those of you who have watched my other SimSmith videos should be able to solve these 10 questions easily. The question will be present for 10 seconds, and then the answer will appear. Pause the video if you wish to delay the answer. I will then briefly discuss the answer. To learn more about the Smith chart, do a Google or other search engine search for topics like, what is the Smith chart? And look at the excellent information from Wikipedia and microwaves101.com. Also search for related topics like reflection coefficient, impedance, admittance, etc. Now let's get started with question number one. Answer B is the best answer by far. Most definitions of the Smith chart include complex reflection coefficient in the first sentence of the definition. Answers A, C, and D are all correct, but they are not how the Smith chart is built. They're telling you what the consequences of having, of having it built are. However, um, answer number C there, I put it in because it was the title of the original paper that Philip Smith wrote about the Smith chart, and that's what he called it. Um, the plot of complex reflection coefficient, gamma is the, is the complex ref reflection coefficient, and it's defined like this, although a lot of times in formulas you'll see 50s replaced for ZS because we us usually use it in a 50 ohm circuit. Rho is a reflection coefficient, and some people don't make, draw any distinction between these, but this is a scalar number. This runs between 0 and 1. This number here um, has a magnitude between 0 and 1 and a phase between 0 and 360. And if we look at the uh, SimSmith here, which is actually running behind these windows, uh, we see the splat is in the center right now. It shows an SWR of 1. It shows gamma is 0 at 0 degrees, right here. If we were to come up here and put gamma out here, or put our splat out here, we'd see gamma being 0.99 at almost zero degrees. Here we'd see it be 0.99 again at 90 degrees. Here we'd see it be about maybe 0.5 at about 45 degrees. I'm sorry, not 45, 135 degrees. Here we'd see it be about 0.5 at minus 40 degrees. So gamma is what's being actually plotted on the Smith chart. On to the next question. Individual points on the Smith chart represent a unique complex reflection coefficient. With that goes a unique impedance, a unique admittance, because impedance and admittance are tied together as one over the other one. SWR also, reflection coefficient, and return loss, as all of these are tied together here. I didn't show mismatch loss, which is also another, uh, it's an opportunity loss, uh, loss that um, the generator could have generated more power into the load, but didn't because of the, um, the impedance it sees. But um, all these other ones are, are correct. Sometimes you think frequency, um, maybe a point on the Smith chart, but what it is is that it's an impedance that may occur at a certain frequency. So if you use SimSmith to give you a sweep and the sweep is at uh, over a frequency range, each, fre each, each point on the, uh, on the Smith chart will be at a different frequency, but they will be impedances still that occurred at that frequency. On to the next question. Here there's only one correct answer. All the circles are circles of constant resistance. For example, this circle right here is 25, we look down here, 25 ohms, 25 ohms. I mean, I'm not clicking exactly on it, so it's a little bit off, but 25.3, 25. Out here we'll see, we'll see 3, 3.1, 3.1. In here we see 200, 200. Each of these circles represents a constant R with, vari with uh, a varying reactance. On to the next question. Now 
In this case, all the lines represent lines of constant reactants. Positive reactants here, reactants of zero here, negative reactants here. On to the next question. Here the lines represent lines of constant admittance and constant impedance both. If we look at the line, we can't really tell it by just looking at Z and looking at, at Y, which are, which are impedance and um, admittance numbers. What we, what we can do is click on here and we can get Sim Smith to show us an impedance only orientation where here it has magnitude of impedance and an angle. Here we see 20, 20 millisiemens, here we see 20, here we see 20, here we see 20. Clicking again, we can go to an impedance mode. We see magnitude of Z here. We see 50 ohms, 50 ohms, 50 ohms, 50, 50 ohms. Over here we'll see um, 400 ohms, 400 ohms, 400 ohms. So if somebody tells you that this circle here is high impedance in the Smith chart, it really isn't. If you want high impedance, you want these arcs. This is an area that contains the high impedance part of the part of the Smith chart, and this contains the low impedance part. But the high impedance, if you want a line of uh, 400 ohms or more of total impedance, you have to be outside of this circle right in here. On to the next question. In this case, the answer is a series inductor. We start right here, and series inductance will keep the resistance constant. This is on a constant resistance line, and be in a direction of increasing the reactance, which is what this is doing. On to the next question. For the orange trace, we see a line, this line right here, is 10 millisiemens of conductance, and it stays 10 millisiemens of conductance. So we know it's a reactive component, because the conductance doesn't change, and it starts off being minus 8 millisiemens of, of susceptance, and it goes to plus 2.8, so we know that it's a capacitor. This is a parallel capacitor, acting on that impedance right there. A lot of people don't think in terms of admittance, but there are only really a certain number of ways you can leave a point uh, on the Smith chart. We had a series inductor, we'd have a series capacitor, we'd have a shunt capacitor going down this way, we'd have a shunt inductor going down this way, and we have the green trace, which is the next question. Okay, for the last example, using this particular Smith chart, this case is a piece of transmission line. We rotate half a revolution around a circle, so it's 90 degrees, and it's going to be centered, looks like, about at 50 ohms, so it's a 50 ohm transmission line. 45 degrees would only have, would only have rotated down to about here. And, of course, 180 degrees gives you a full rotation. And 180, degree, 180 degrees gives you a full rotation due to the fact that, that the um, signal goes down and then comes back up the other, the uh, same path it went down, giving you a full phase reversal. On to the next question. Here the correct answer is B. The transmission line is lossy. What we have is a nearly circular path, but we see it starting to spiral inward. And the spiraling inward is due to loss in the transmission line. On to the last question. Here the answer to the question is the transmission line surge impedance is above 50 ohms. We have the classic circular rotation that you get for a piece of transmission line. It 
appears to be coming back on the point where it started very closely, so it's low loss. It's of length a little bit less than a half a wavelength, but it's centered out here somewhere. This piece of transmission line I used for this example is 150 ohms. And this is typical um, of what you, would, what you would expect to see. Hope everyone has enjoyed this little diversion of this quiz. And if you like the video or the idea of these kind of videos, please like the video. Also, uh, if you know people who are interested in this topic, please uh, suggest that they take a look at these videos. Thank you again.